welcome to our season of Advent. All is quiet. Find some quiet time in your house, in your home. We will now bless the Advent wreath. It has green in it. It has blue in it. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of the Jesus who is Christ, not only at nativity time, but to come again in glory to be with all of us. We gather and bless our Advent wreath. May it remind us of God's everlasting love. Come, Lord Jesus, and fill us with trust and confidence as we wait in joyful hope for your coming in glory. Help us to pause in this busy season and to be mindful of your presence in our lives. We bless this wreath in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today let us touch our harp. Come, O come, Emmanuel. 
live in us, dwell in us. Grant us quiet time. Grant us forgiveness. Make us whole again. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy, forgive us our sin, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, grant your faithful to resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming. May we be worthy to possess the heavenly banquet and the heavenly presence through Christ, who is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, for the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. And our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who roused himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the works of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God that was bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. That in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as to the testimony in Christ that was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad 
he leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own task. And orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or a cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of Salvation. Did you see the moon last night? Oh my goodness, it was like sunshine, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, many, 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 many moons ago, I was living in a place called Globe, Arizona. You know where that is, right? Well, all of you who live here have that idea. I celebrated a wedding in Seattle, and um, it was a Globe parishioner, and she married a Jewish man, okay, over there in Seattle. So. We all went over there, and I got, I got a plane ride and all of that kind of thing, and got chauffeured around Seattle and brought to the church. And um, as we were parking, the three-year-old suddenly got out the door of the car and ran across the road. The mother, looking both ways, ran across the road and spanked the child. And then she picked him up in her arms, and his tears and her tears mingled together. The fright of the whole event. Honestly, when it happened, I felt like I was being spanked. It was so sudden. And what could have happened? Be watchful. Be alert. We were all yip-yapping away, talking about this and that. And a three-year-old child dashed across the road to receive the love from his uncle. But for mom, it was a different, different situation. It was a cry of dismay. In her fright, as many of you have had many times with your children, as to what could have happened, she struck at the child, but then held the child in sheer relief. Now look at the word from Isaiah. You are our father. You do instruct us. You do get angry at us. I was the favorite child of my mother, but every once in a while she did get angry at me. In this scripture, we are finding that God is instructing, disciplining, and yet I am the potter, you are the clay. It is the lament of Isaiah that says that you are not only father, you are redeemer, and you are named forever. 
like the three-year-old in Seattle, why do you let us wander far from your love and your ways? You'd speak to us today as a frightened parent who is loving and missing their children and wondering what could happen. Like the three-year-old's mom, you are angry, yet you, O Lord, are our father. We are the clay. We are, all of us, the work of your hands. O my brothers and my sisters, today's scripture calls us to be watchful be alert, to come with Jesus because the gospel of Mark comes today from the Garden of Gethsemane. They're asleep. They have no idea what is happening. And he speaks to them from his sweat and tears. COVID-19 has pushed all of us into a time of fear and stress. When will it end? Even our seven-year-olds are worried. They've never gone to school like this before. They're missing their grandparents. They're missing their friends at school. They're missing their playgrounds. Many of them are even missing playtime. It is stressful for parents and for grandparents. And I know, I know Zoom works, but it doesn't. It's a vision. It's a voice. But it's not the arms of grandmother and grandfather hugging them showing them that they are special and beloved. You are the father. We are the clay. We were getting out of the car and no one was paying attention to the danger for a child. How are we doing today about the danger in our world? Advent is that time to be watchful, to stay awake, to be alert. Pay attention to a quiet time. Work it into your day every day, especially as the sun goes down. Take a look at the the painted colors in our sky before the moon comes up. And just let it be quiet. You will see that you are already living as God's beloved. Being watching constitutes a yearning for a world to be renewed for a world that will act like the Christ who walked with us, who became flesh and dwelt among us. Stand ready. Be alert. Be watchful. Today in our celebration and praise of the Father who created us, We await the coming of the Christ in glory. Now let us curse the darkness and light the candle of salvation on our wreaths.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended among the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As we eagerly await the coming of your Son of Man, let us turn in confidence to God, who is Father and Almighty. Let us beseech his mercy upon ourselves and upon the whole world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the holy season of Advent may increase our love for and devotion to the teachings of the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to all violent conflict in the world and that government leaders work toward lasting peace and true justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that they be consoled and comforted by the knowledge that Christ is with them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of St. Pius X, that they may grow in love and compassion for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pray for Bob and Dorothy Whalen, who have been married 73 years today. Oh my, come on, 73 years. I'm going to have to talk to them and see if they were married at 12 and 10. <laughs> they are a really vibrant couple. It's beautiful. May the Lord watch over and protect all those who are ill, especially Don Fisher, Margie Rivera, Linda Giacolati, Josephine Samoy. And may all caregivers feel your love and protection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord receive all those who have died, especially Eugene Bracamonte, John Swalek, and Tom Cormier, and those who are grieving for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. You are our loving Father. You have fashioned us in your image and likeness. You have done great things for us. We are filled with joy Keep us united with you in all things. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For justice for free 
pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O gracious God, our Father. Accept these offerings we may gather from among your gifts to us. May we celebrate devoutly here below to gain for us eternal and everlasting redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, eternal God. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. He fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for the day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with all the thrones of heaven and all the dominions and all the hosts and powers, we now come to glorify you as we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God indeed holy the font of all holiness make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and gave you thanks he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat this is my body which will be given up for you When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of compassion and charity. Be close to church and all the people who live in violent places in our world. We pray together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all who serve you. Remember all our brothers and all our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Welcome all who have died in your mercy into the light of your presence. Have mercy that with Mary, the mother of God, the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and we may praise and glorify you to your son, Jesus, our risen Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Peace be with all of you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. In the breaking of the bread we shall know it.
as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you. So that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end. Irrepro irreproachable on the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him, you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May these mysteries in which we have participated profit us forever now as we walk among the mid amid the passing things you teach us. Help us to endure, to be watchful, to be alert. To Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be at peace. Thanks be to God. T.
teach us in the ways to Thank you. 